TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. U.S. and European officials express frustration after an Iranian response to an EU document aimed at reviving the 2015 nuclear agreement was labeled as a step backwards. Pentagon Press Secretary Brigadier General Pat Ryder says the RGC's attempt to steal a U.S. naval sail drone earlier this week is indicative of Iranian behavior in the region for many years. Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gunn thanks the United States for approving the sale of four aerial tankers, which will significantly ratchet up Israel's qualitative military edge versus Iran. In what is described by U.S. officials as a step backwards, the latest Iranian response to U.S. input of an EU document aimed at reviving the 2015 nuclear agreement has diminished hopes of imminent breakthrough. Moreover, according to senior Biden administration officials who were cited by the U.S.-based Politico media company, a preliminary study of the Iranian response is not at all encouraging, a position shared by a European diplomat who referred to the Iranian response as negative and not reasonable. Nevertheless, according to the Iranian foreign ministry in Tehran, the comments had been formulated out of a constructive approach aimed at completing the negotiations to re-enter the nuclear agreement. And while the contents of the Iranian response remain obscure, the two points which were raised by Iranian Foreign Minister Hassan Amir Abdullahian in Moscow and reported on by TV7 yesterday indicate that the points of contention remain on Tehran's unyielding demands including for the International Atomic Energy Agency, or IAEA, to abandon its outstanding investigations into undeclared nuclear materials, which were uncovered in Iran in breach of Tehran's NPT commitments, and for U.S. guarantees that any future administration would not be able to scrap a potentially revived deal without severe penalties in favor of the Islamic Republic. Meanwhile, despite the apparent setback, French ambassador to the United Nations, Nicolas de Rivière, whose country is set to assume the presidency of the UN Security Council, insisted that the 2015 nuclear agreement remains a valid document. La résolution reste valide, l'accord reste valide. La seule chose, c'est que il avait été, euh, d'une certaine manière, partiellement vidé de sa substance par les décisions de l'administration américaine en 2018, euh, dans un premier temps, puis ensuite par le fait que l'Iran Voyant cela, avait décidé de de s'abstraire de ses propres obligations sur le volet nucléaire. Donc, ce dont on a besoin, c'est que les uns et les autres reviennent à une pleine application de leurs obligations découlant du JCPOA et de la résolution 2231. Meanwhile, reports alleging that Moscow procured Iranian unmanned aerial vehicles which are expected to serve Russia in its invasion of Ukraine have been vehemently denied by the Russian foreign ministry as Western propaganda, even though it acknowledged that cooperation between the defense ministries in both Moscow and Tehran have been developing dynamically. Мы считаем, что эта тема искусственно вбрасывалась в американские средства массовой информации, в том числе со стороны Вашингтон Пост, искусственно раскручивалась. Второе, комментировал ее уже пресс-секретарь президента Российской Федерации, комментировал исчерпывающе. Ранее помощник президента России Юрий Викторович Шаков обозначил, что закупка беспилотников не обсуждалась в ходе встреч президента России с иранским руководством в Тегеране 19 июля. А что касается взаимодействия между оборонными ведомствами двух стран, оно действительно Despite Zakharova's comments, which were made while Iranian Foreign Minister Amir Abdullahian visited Moscow earlier this week, effectively sought to portray the West as deliberately spreading misinformation to demonize Russia, Tehran's incessant desire to portray itself as a major contender on the international stage drove the commander of the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, Major General Hussein Salami, to boast in a recent sale of homegrown military equipment to foreign customers, including some major world powers. The RGC commander boastfully confirmed, quote, 
A number of the world's top ranking powers are willing to purchase military and defense equipment from the Islamic Republic. Indeed, this process has materialized as they are currently using the Iranian arms and receiving training. And while not mentioning Russia by name, the statement effectively corroborates intelligence information that was released by the Pentagon, citing a first shipment of hundreds of Iranian-made unmanned aerial vehicles to Russia and that Russian operators are currently undergoing training over the systems in Iran. It is important to highlight that the Ayatollah regime in Tehran has instructed its revolutionary guards and military industry to prioritize the development of its unmanned aerial systems, regarding it as the decisive weapons of future wars and a deterrent against its long list of adversaries. <laughs> از جمله جنگ افزارهای سرنوشت ها در جنگ های آینده هست توانمندی ملت ما و نیروهای مسلح کشور جمهوری اسلام ایران به میزانی هست که میتواند در مقابل همه تهدیدات ایستادگی کنه و آزمود را آزمودن خطا Earlier this week, an Islamic Revolutionary Guard's Navy vessel attempted to steal an American naval drone in what U.S. military sources have told TV7 was yet another blatant Iranian attempt to steal U.S. military technology. Nevertheless, as was the case in the past, an immediate response by the U.S. Navy thwarted the Iranian attempt. The U.S. Navy observed the IRGCN uh, IRGC Navy support ship towing a sail drone explorer unmanned surface vessel uh, in what we assessed was an attempt to to detain it. Uh, and so the uh, the USS Thunderbolt uh, and a uh, MH60S Seahawk uh, responded. Uh, we did hail the ship and ask them to release uh, the drone, which they did. Uh, and so um, I, would, I would join General Carrillo, I'm sure you saw his statement, and just commending the professionalism, the competence of the crew of the USS Thunderbolt, which ultimately prevented Iran uh, from essentially stealing uh, one of our drones, uh, our um, uh, unmanned surface vessels. Asked whether the Iranian attempt to steal U.S. assets in the Persian Gulf could be characterized as a pattern, Brigadier General Ryder highlighted the following. I, I hesitate to characterize it as a pattern other than to say uh, that it's indicative of the kind of behavior that we've seen from Iran in the region for, frankly, many years uh, when it comes to this kind of disruptive and inappropriate activity. Um, and so uh, having, having watched uh, in the past some of the uh, activities of uh, the IRGC Navy, um, you know, this is not, not the first time they've done these kinds of things. And so, again, it, it just showcases uh, the challenge that Iran presents uh, in terms of the threat to the region uh, and a, another reason why we'll continue to work very closely uh, with our partners and our allies in the region to help provide the stability that's important uh, to keep uh, not only the sea lanes open, but the health and safety of, of those that are operating in that area. Asked further whether the United States was concerned about a reported uptick in deliberate Israeli activities against Iranian targets in Syria and elsewhere, General Ryder stressed the long-standing security relationship with its ally Israel in the Middle East. You know, certainly we have a very long-standing security relationship uh, with our ally Israel. Um, I'm not going to talk about specific uh, details when it comes to um, consultation, cooperation, coordination, things like that, other than to say, again, uh, we maintain a very robust dialogue uh, with this important ally in the region. Meanwhile, in Jerusalem, Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid held a working meeting with Mossad Director David Barna ahead of the latter's trip to the United States next week, during which he is expected to brief senior U.S. officials in Washington on Israel's deep-rooted concerns regarding the Islamic Republic of Iran, with chief focus on Jerusalem's perceived flaws of the nuclear agreement. During the meeting with Lapid, the two discussed the Mossad director's preparations for Israel's continued effort to avert what Balna dubbed earlier this week a strategic catastrophe.
Separately, Israeli Defense Minister Benny Gantz, who recently returned from a similar working visit to the United States, warmly welcomed a decision by the U.S. Department of Defense to provide Israel with four advanced aerial tankers, which will significantly enhance the Israeli Air Force capacity to strike long-distance targets. In his statement, Defense Minister Gantz wrote, I thank the U.S. Department of Defense for signing with Boeing the refueling deal that is important to Israel's security, which I began to promote about two years ago. Jerusalem's top defense official further highlighted that the refueling planes that we are purchasing, along with the purchase of the new F-35 Squadron, the transport helicopters, the submarines and the advanced armaments, will serve the IDF in the face of the enormous challenges near and far that lie ahead. Minister Gantz concluded his statement by asserting that Washington's will to sell Israel the advanced systems is yet another proof to the unbreakable alliance and the strategic relations of the Israeli and American defense establishments. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. It is important for us to highlight that TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry. Therefore, if you're blessed by our productions, please consider making a financial contribution that in turn will enable us to sustain our ongoing operations. Additionally, I would like to encourage you to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide and for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shabbat Shalom and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.